Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to my channel from Dream to Seed. My name is Jessica, and if you are anything like me, you would happily be a full-time gardener. But like me, you probably have family obligations and a job and lots of other things that are important in life that you have to split your time between. So over the years, I have found a few ways that help me work more efficiently in the garden, spending more time doing the things that I love in the garden and less time doing the things that I don't like as much. So today I have my top 10 tips for busy gardeners. And don't forget to stick around until the end of the video where I'll be also giving you a bonus tip. I would say watering and weeding are definitely in my top five list of things that I don't like to do in my garden. And I bet I'm not the only one. So my first tip for you is to mulch. Whether you have raised beds, whether you have in-ground garden, or whether you even do container gardening, mulching is such a great way to prevent many problems in your garden. So first let's talk about watering. When you mulch um, with any kind of material, it will prevent water evaporation from the top few inches of that soil. So that is gonna cut back on the amount of times that you have to water your garden. It's also going to help keep the temperature of the soil cool, which will make a lot of these plants a lot happier. They don't mind sun on their leaves, but they like cool roots. They don't like their roots to be really baked and really hot. Mulching can really also help with weed suppression. It will keep a lot of those annual weed seeds from blowing in and making contact with the soil and then growing. It, and it can also suppress the growth of any perennial or more established weeds that are already in your beds. When it comes to the material that I use to mulch with, I do prefer using organic materials versus something like black plastic or landscaping fabric. And that's because by using organic materials such as um, dried grass or chopped up leaves or straw or undyed hardwood mulch or pine straw which is what I love to use because it takes forever to break down <laughs> and it lasts a really long time um, these will eventually over time break down and they will add nutrients and help feed that soil making it more healthy Another great thing about mulch is it can actually help prevent disease on a lot of your plants. So for example, these tomatoes, a lot of the fungus that affects tomatoes is um, present in the soil. And so when the rain or when you're hand watering and that water comes down and splashes up on those leaves, that's how the soil will actually begin to make contact with those plants. So by mulching, I'm help preventing a lot of that splashback from getting onto my leaves. Also, with a lot of plants, uh, particularly salad greens like kale, lettuces, spinach, you can actually kind of plant them in a way to create a living mulch. So for example, this kale bed, I've spaced these plants pretty close together, which salad greens you can definitely do. They don't mind being crowded. But what happens is because the leaves are close together, they're actually shading the soil and making sort of like a mulch. And by doing that, they are again, suppressing the weed growth. They are helping shade the soil to keep the water from evaporating. But because these are cool season plants and they like cool soil and cool roots, it will also also help keep them from bolting a little bit sooner. Behind me you'll see my onion bed with a little bit of delphinium in the back. But in this bed you'll see two things that have really helped me to be more, a more efficient gardener. Number one is this bed actually does have a mulch on it. It's just mulch with compost. And for some of my plants, like onions that are planted a lot closer together, um, I, like to, I like to mulch with compost because not only is it feeding those onions, which are heavy feeders, but it's a little bit easier to get the mulch in between those plants or actually have it already amended before I even plant them as opposed to my pine needles or straw that I like to add after the plants are planted. But you will also see soaker hoses running through. And I would say this has been the biggest thing that I have done in my garden to save me time. I have 11 raised beds and watering all of these by hand, sometimes daily in the summer would take a really, really long time. So I did take some more time up front in installing soaker hoses on all of my beds. I also have a timer that runs to these soaker hoses so I don't even have to come out in the morning. They will just automatically, uh, they will automatically start watering. Now I did actually do a video recently about watering systems and the different ones you can have in your garden and also my whole system. So I will definitely link that below. But soaker hoses are great, not only in saving you time but they also water better because again we talked about how you should really be watering at the base of your plants so you're not creating that splashback up from the soil 
Also, if you're watering overhead, sometimes those water droplets can stay on leaves and actually act like little magnifying glasses that can burn your leaves. So base watering is a lot better method to water these plants where you're getting the water straight to the roots where they actually need it. And speaking of compost, adding compost to your garden is hands down one of the best things that you can do for the overall health of your garden. Not only again will it, will it act like a mulch to help suppress those weeds, but it will also continuously feed your plants throughout the year, simultaneously helping to improve the structure of your soil. And healthier soil equals healthier plants, which equals less work for you. My next tip is actually using things like flowers and strong scented herbs to not only attract beneficial insects to your garden, but to deter the pests that you don't want in your garden. So for example, in my tomato bed, I have cosmos, I have basil, and I have marigolds. And these will each serve a specific purpose in my garden. The cosmos will not only attract things that will help pollinate my vegetables, but it will also attract ladybugs, which are really great at controlling aphid populations. The basil I will allow to flower, which is a great uh, attraction for pollinators, but it is also a really strong smelling herb it can, and it can actually help deter tomato hornworm from getting on your tomatoes. And the marigolds kind of act as the same way. They're definitely an attraction for pollinators, but they also have a really strong scent, which can help, can help deter some of those pests that you don't want in your garden. I would say another thing that I used to spend a lot of time doing in my garden was pest treatment and disease treatment in my garden. And so I have found that preventing those things from happening as best I can in the first place saves me a lot of time later. As I mentioned before, you can definitely use things like flowering herbs, strong smelling herbs, and other flowers to attract beneficials and to deter pests. I also recently did a video about using floating row covers, which I'll link below, and this is also a great way to easily control pest populations in your garden. However, my next two tips I want to focus on are helping to prevent disease in your plants, in particular fungal disease. I would say that in my garden at least, fungal disease prevention starts in choosing actually what seeds I'm going to start or plants I'm going to plant. So I'm gonna use tomatoes for an example because they're a common one that lots of us grow in our garden. You can have things like heirloom tomatoes and you can have things that are hybrid, plants that are hybrid tomatoes. And heirloom tomatoes, while they taste amazing, and if you're wanting a very specific kind of tomato that's been grown for generations, heirlooms are great, but they are a lot of times very susceptible to diseases, particularly fungal disease, blight, leaf spot, um, lots of other things. So I have found in my garden, if I want to spend less time doing a fungal disease treatment. I often will choose hybrid varieties of tomatoes. And a lot of people will say they don't taste as good. And well, that may be the case. I will say that a hybrid tomato fresh off the vine beats a, a tomato you'll buy at the store any day of the week. <laughs> So a lot of times I'm choosing a hybrid variety of a tomato versus the heirloom tomato. So for example, this is just the giant red beef steak and this is an heirloom variety. But instead I could choose this super steak hybrid and it's gonna be really similar to the beef steak, but it's gonna have those qualities that a hybrid would have. They're, these plants have been bred specifically for disease resistance and other, other qualities as well. But this is gonna be a better option in my garden if, if I'm going for um, having to spend less time treating fungal diseases. Also, if you're really just wanting to grow heirlooms and not hybrids. Um, there are definitely some heirlooms that do a lot better as far as disease resistance goes and others. So my favorite heirloom tomato to grow is Carbon because it has a lot of natural disease resistance still being an heirloom tomato. So if you're a busy gardener like me, you might want to consider choosing hybrid varieties that have some disease resistance spread into them to help prevent you having to spend so much time treating for those diseases. My next tip in helping prevent disease is actually how you grow these plants. So fungus thrives in wet, crowded conditions. And while some plants like these greens don't mind being crowded, they're not very susceptible to uh, fungal diseases, things like tomatoes are. So I have found in my garden growing vertically really helps prevent a lot of those fungal diseases and I can do this with melons I can do this with squash zucchini I can do this with cucumbers and I also definitely do it with my tomatoes with my tomatoes I really pay attention to spacing making sure they're at least two feet apart I like growing them upwards on stakes I also heavily prune my tomatoes and by doing this I'm creating an environment with lots of sunlight on the leaves and airflow and this means it's an environment that fungus does not like to grow in so I can spend less time treating my tomatoes for fungus and more time eating fresh tomatoes
My next tip for busy gardeners is to succession plant, and I'm gonna be using green beans as an example. A lot of the vegetables in my beds are my cool season vegetables, spring uh, planting vegetables that are gonna be coming out soon. For example, these carrots. And I wanna have something ready to go to put in this bed so it's not sitting empty. I love to use green beans for this reason. They germinate and they grow and they fruit quickly. However, a lot of times they are very prolific uh, plants. You get a lot of harvest off just a few plants. And if you have planted all of your plants at the same time, that means they're going to harvest all at the same time. And if you're like me and you get busy for a few days and you don't come check, you may end up having a ton of green beans that you don't know what to do with, or they may have been sitting too long on that plant and now they're too tough to eat, or worse, they've even started to rot a little bit. And we don't want that to happen. So if you succession plant, which means that you're spacing out your planting uh, about every two weeks, you will also space out your harvest harvest, which means you can have smaller harvests more frequently so that you're having less, less waste on those plants. My next tip for busy gardeners is using forecasted rain to help you save time in the garden. If you have rain forecasted for later in the day, this is a great time to get your seeds, seedlings, and any granular fertilizer in the ground, and then you can let that rain water them in for you. Speaking of fertilizers, my next tip is to choose an organic granular slow release fertilizer versus a synthetic or liquid fertilizer. These granular fertilizers will break down a lot slowly over time and feed your plants over a longer period of time with lower doses, which can actually help reduce the risk of leaf burn from liquid fertilizers, and it will also help you go a lot longer between fertilizations. My last tip for busy gardeners is to have a plan for your harvest. If you know you're about to have a really large vegetable harvest, for example, this kale and lettuce, make sure you have a plan in place so all of your hard work does not go to waste. So many vegetables can be frozen, dehydrated, or canned to help preserve them for longer. Also, you can share them with friends and family, and there's also many food pantries that would love to take fresh vegetable donations. So make sure you've got a harvest plan in place so that you get the most out of your garden. Okay, if you've stayed to the end, thanks so much. And here's your bonus tip. And that is to keep just a really cheap calendar close by where you can write down any plants that you have treated or fertilized. If you're like me, you are super scatterbrained and I would never be able to remember all the different plants that I've had to treat or fertilize or the schedules that they need to stay on. So I keep this right in my shed and anytime that I spray a plant or I fertilize it, I just write it down. And that way I know when I've done it and also when I need to do it again. Thanks so much for hanging out in my garden with me today. As always, don't forget to subscribe and follow me on Instagram and TikTok. I also have a Facebook page where I post quick, easy to follow gardening tips. Also, if you're interested in my soaker hose system or any of my favorite fertilizers, I will list them below. Until then, I'll see you next time. Bye.